Mistakes are an integral part of us humans. It was some mistakes and accidents that led to discoveries of certain things which were quite fruitful to us. However, some of these are just insane, and all they did was create chaos and cause harm to the people around. And one such incident happened with phosgene. But what exactly happened? Is phosgene poisonous? What harm did it cause? Continue watching the video till the end to know more. Let's just start with the story. It was during my PhD days when we were conducting experiments by making use of chemicals which included phosgene constantly and would liquefy it just to add to the erection mixes via an ice-jacketed addition funnel. The prime source of our phosgene was via a cylinder that was closed off by making use of a square nut. And then, in order to crack open the cylinder, we required two people, one to hold the cylinder and the other one to open the valve by making use of a huge adjustable spanner. Moving on this one time, some pursuing junior PhD candidates were setting up to run a phosgene reaction in the overnight lack, and we seniors were asked to help them as a courtesy by assisting and mentoring them. We condensed around 20 to 30 milliliters of liquid phosgene, and it was placed into the ice-jacketed dropping funnel. The juniors were setting their run, and I was the one doing a final check. It was at this moment when I realized that the ice back around the reaction flask was melting really fast, like really, really fast. Therefore, I was bound to take a look into this and search for the cause. It turned out that the junior had accidentally left the heater on the hot plate, or which we commonly known as the stirrer turned on full. I made sure to point that out to him. Therefore, he loosened the clamp holding the reaction flask and lifted it out off the melting ice bath. As soon as he went to move out the ice bath on the very hot plate, his lab coat sleeve caught on the stop cock of the liquid phosgene, filled additional funnel and pulled it out. The liquid phosgene deposited it itself into the now hot hot plate and instantly vaporized. Despite being in a fine hood, the phosgene flashed off and sprayed the junior and a second junior standing next to him. There were two juniors who then left the laboratory and sped down the corridor to the door in order to exit the building and threw off clothes as they ran. Meanwhile, I stayed in the laboratory and opened the windows of the lab by mistake in order to get rid of the now gaseous phosgene and held my breath at the same time. The windows were now open. I exited the lab and stood by the door in order to prevent anyone entering. Huge, huge mistake, by the way, as the air in the building was at a lower pressure than outside. Therefore, the phosgene was now being blown out of the lab into the corridor, making its way through the gap around the doors. As it was after hours, I thought this was the best course of action rather than sounding the alarm to evacuate the building. Huge mistake again. The head of the school came by and stopped in order to chat with me with phosgene streaming through the door but luckily he was standing away from the stream. Fun fact, phosgene has an unusually pleasant odor that one would think from its structure. The head of school then finishes off his conversation and walks off. Then came the two juniors, who are now wearing significantly less clothing than they were originally wearing. Just how toxic is phosgene, they asked. Why don't you go up to the library and check them if you do not know, I said. Therefore, they went off. 20 minutes later, they came back claiming, holy crap, they said. You can breathe in a lethal dose and show no ill effects for several hours, then drown in your own body fluids. The next morning, the juniors rocked up to work. One looked really, really pale. I then walked up to him and asked, So what is up with you? He replied, I was watching the news at 10 and coughed. I did not know whether to call for an ambulance, so I stayed wide awake until around 5 a.m. All in all, there were a number of oops moments all around. Still, this is an era wherein what I believed was quite Darwinian. All I learned from this was to complete your PhD while making sure to stay alive with all fingers or other appendages. It is only then when you can earn your PhD. Did you have any such interesting stories to tell us? Did you find the story interesting? Did we miss out on anything? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to get to know your perspective on this matter. Let's discuss these in yet another video, so stay tuned. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. If you liked the video, then do make sure to smash the like button and hit the subscribe button too. Don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss another update from our channel. With that being said, let's meet in another one of such awesome videos. Until then, see ya!